this afternoon, or this morning, or, or this evening, depending on, on what part of the world you're, you're zooming in for. My name's Owen Cotter. I'm the Learning Experience Lead here at GBHI. And I'm just going to briefly introduce um, what, our, what our session is going to be today. Um, sorry, my, my, my computer is misbehaving. <laughs> So our goals today are really to, to welcome uh, the, 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 our, our regional mentors into GBHI and tell them a little bit more about our fellowship and our overall mission. For all attendees, the mentors, faculty and fellows to talk a little bit about the pilot awards for global leaders and brain health and mentorship more generally at GBHI and to create a networking opportunity. So we'll have a little bit of breakout sessions and uh, carry on some of the conversations and networking that have, has already been going on before the session started. Um, so, I, I, as I mentioned, I, I'm just giving a quick overview. The, our site director from UCSF, Victor Valcor, will give an overview of GBHI and an introduction. Um, Irisima Larai, the leadership, or sorry, the mentorship lead from GB from Trinity, will will talk about mentorship and the role of regional mentors. Our staff lead for, for pilots, uh, Aura, will, will speak a little bit about the pilot awards. Um, we will have, and this is always a very nice uh, part of the session, we will have some fellows and regional mentors from past years come and, and, and have, a, have a little section as well, and that will be facilitated by Jen Yokiyama from UCSF. Then we will have breakout sessions uh, where everyone will get a chance to network in small groups for a little while, followed by a Q&A session that will be facilitated by myself, myself and Aura. So um, with that, I'm going to hand over to uh, Victor. Good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm at home today a little under the weather, which uh, allows me to walk around in a sweatshirt and... Uh, cap so i apologize for looking a little too casual but um it makes me feel a little bit better when i'm feeling a little bit under the weather uh i'm i'm excited to meet all of you some of you i know quite well uh and uh to talk a little bit about mentoring uh our if i can go to the next slide we're we're an institute that's been in place since 2015 and uh as it, we've, we've trained 232 atlantic fellows at this point in 54 different countries now this is a very novel model for um, international engagement because at every step, the fellow is at the center of all the decision making. So we're not prescribing anything or telling people how to do things. Instead, we're listening to what the needs are and getting voices from people like those on the call who are regionally uh, experts so that we can advance what is our larger strategy but we're doing it through the fellows' smaller strategy. So the fellows tell us what the strategy is for achieving our uh, goals in their country and their region. And then we accompany them largely to raise money, uh, to help solve problems, but really the solutions need to come from within the communities, which is why regional mentorship is so core. Now, I, I didn't put this slide in, but I feel like I need to tell you, we, we have worked with the Alzheimer's Association now uh, since inception of this institute. And together with the Alzheimer's Society UK, GBHI and the Alzheimer's Association, we have funded at this point $4.1 million in small $25,000 pilots. Those fellows have raised an additional $12 million for those pilots, exactly linked to those pilots. So the investment has come to over $16 million in 52 countries. And I don't stop there. Those fellows have also raised dollars in other activities adjacent to these pilots. And the total there is $120 million. A lot of those grants were written with us as faculty uh, co-writing. So I think this is where the money is in terms of changing uh, the narrative around uh, dementia is, uh, is partnerships that are bilateral, including regional mentors and the fellows at the center of all the decision making. Next slide, Ara. So we're really keen on creating this network, empowering people on the ground to lead the decision making um, and use this platform of effective projects to achieve a lot of the goals. 
I use the word accompaniment, which some of you may recognize is a term that Paul Farmer had used, the late Paul Farmer used this in his engagement internationally. And it's a partnership in which the fellows lead and we are really there uh, to break bread with them, to be on the phone, to answer questions, to solve problems, IRBs, finances, and so forth. But we're not leading the, the change. We're just there to accompany and make sure that uh, the, the fellows have all that they need to achieve what they want to do. And as I said, a lot of that, at least my day, and I know a lot of the faculty I work with here at UCSF, we're writing papers, we're writing grants, we're, we're doing a lot of co-writing. I've never written more grants that didn't have my name on it than I have in the past five years, which is, uh, which is really fantastic. The next slide, please. <clears throat> so GBHI uh, supports Atlantic Fellows, as I said, to achieve their activities that are contextual to the communities that we're in. Go to the next slide, please. Partnering with the leaders is really important because leaders within the country because solutions need to be locally derived in order to have impact. We can't take a concept that works in UCSF or in Ireland and demand that fellows follow exactly that policy or that approach. Instead, we can share what works in these areas and share the core concepts that we like to achieve and allow fellows and their leaders in the country to decide how that might be implemented within their own context. Um, and then I only have... Uh, a couple more slides. You can skip the next one. Ara, I talked about it a little bit. And let's go to the arc of impact. The way our program is designed, uh, we try to build on what fellows have done in the past. When I have conversations with fellows, I talk about their arc of learning. The most successful pilots are those that build on what fellows had been doing before they came to see us and build out what they will be doing once they leave. So we think about this arc. Um, our fellows come in uh, to an in-residence time of 12 months where they get a lot of um, skills building. Uh, we talk a lot about uh, creativity, innovation. They begin writing their pilots about this time of year, and the pilots build on prior work usually and, and kind of lead them into where they will be in, in the future with a funded pilot. They begin these activities as they return to their community. We accompany them, so we continue this bond and this link. Uh, we champion the work. We try to co-write. We try to amplify impact and so forth. And in the most successful pilots, we move into writing larger grants with our fellows um, to get more activities done. In, uh, in Latin America, at this point, I think we have four different NIH R01 grants all uh, with co-faculty, uh, most of them with co-faculty uh, here at UCSF. <clears throat> the last slide is uh, is really from our uh, a, a nod to our funder, uh, Chuck Feeney. If you are really committed to making a difference in brain health, the, uh, the Atlantic Fellows Program will help you uh, to dream big, change lives, and make a huge impact. Chuck Feeney always would say it's about the people and that's how we have designed a program. We've designed a program with the Atlantic Fellows at the center of all the change that we are trying to achieve, directed by the fellows and leveraging their strategies so that we can achieve a larger impact. Thanks very much for uh, for listening to my uh, overview of GBHI and I'll hand it back to, I guess, Owen. Thank you very much, Victor. Um, I'll just hand it over to Ira Seema now, if if you're ready, Ira. You'll give an overview of uh, mentorship and regional mentorship. Thanks very much, Owen. Give me a moment here to get my slides up. There we go. Uh, so thanks very much to all of you for taking the time to spend with us this afternoon and find out a little bit more about the role that you've been invited to participate in, namely as regional mentors here at GBHI. So my name is Iris Emma Leroy. I'm a geriatric psychiatrist at GBHI Trinity. Trinity, of course, is one of the ancient universities partnered with Oxford and Cambridge, and we date back to 1592. We have one of the most beautiful libraries in the world. So any time you're in Europe, please do stop by and we will give you a guided tour. So you're all very welcome. So I'm gonna chat a little bit about the role of mentorship, talk about the types of mentors, touch on the timeline of events for yourselves, the regional mentors who have agreed to be part of this journey, 
and then finish up with mentioning the regional mentor network. So there are several pillars that make up the program of GBHI, the year, the fellowship year at the Global Brain Health Institute. And one of these essential pillars is in fact mentorship. It's working alongside and together with our fellows to support their leadership and their educational journey through the program, but also beyond. And I think that's an extremely important point that the fellowship year is really the starting point for our fellows. And as they leave the program, they join the wider network, the ever growing network that you've heard about to effect change as brain leaders around the world. And many of us do keep contact as mentors with our mentees who then become brain health leaders. And in an ideal world that we build that together with their own regional mentors as well. So I'm one of the GBHI in-house mentors. So all our faculty members also are mem mentors and we're considered kind of the anchor to the program for the fellows. So as I mentioned, we support their learning and leadership journey. We facilitate training opportunities throughout the program. So if there's a need for bespoke training or to meet a particular learning or leadership need for a fellow, we'll do our best to try to match that. We also play a role in guiding them through the pilot applications. Now at that point, sometimes things can merge into a little bit of a supervisory role, but I'd like to stress that mentors are really there for, for mentorship, support and championing the role and the learning journey of the fellows. Then of course, we develop a relationship with yourselves, the regional mentors, and I'll touch on that in a moment. And then as they move through the year, we support that transition into the next phase of their career as they go home with the, with the goal to become a brain health leader. So then there's yourselves, the regional mentors. So along with the GBHI in-house mentor, again, to be a supporter, advisor, and champion of your mentee, the GBHI fellow. Now, for many of you, you already will know your fellow and might have supported their application to the pro program. However, in some cases, you might have been approached de novo and getting to know the fellow from the beginning and also to understand the GBHI program. So there are two different approaches really to this, both of them equally valuable. So the role of the regional mentors yourselves is to help the fellow stay connected to their local community while they've stepped out for a year in the program, but absolutely critically to help them reintegrate and to support their work as they return in a regional or disciplinary context. And I mentioned disciplinary because generally the relationships are regional or geographically based, but in some cases, particularly for people who have a fairly um, unique area of interest, sometimes the regional mentor might be more based on their discipline and not necessarily regional. So again, supporting that transition back home to the environment and their career. And again, a key issue here is to change that trajectory, that arc of their career. So they're not just going back to doing what they did before the program, but they come back with new skills, new learning, a new vision of what they want to do and achieve and to help them do that as they return. So again, it's also to provide the experiences and the opportunities to continue that journey of learning and to help manifest the vision which they've been thinking about during the year away. Providing new opportunities, facilitating access to resources, and then coming down to the very specifics, helping with the development and implementation of the pilot project, which they will have been thinking about for a number of months prior to leaving the program. So we like to think about this idea of the triadic relationship with GBHI mentorship. So on the one hand, we have the mentee, the fellow, they have, we have our in-house mentor, and then of course our regional mentor. But this forms a relationship which goes in multiple directions. And I think if working well can be really powerful. And I believe that most of you already will have had your triad meetings with your GBHI in-house mentor and mentee. And so you'll get to know each other. So if you haven't, I'll strongly encourage you to set up those meetings or we'll ask our in-house mentors or fellows to arrange those meetings so that you can get to know each other and try to understand what the shared goals are. But on the right side of the slide, there's another form of triad. For many of us as faculty, we have more than one mentee. In other words, we've, in my case, I've got two, which is fairly typical. And that can also be a very interesting relationship. In my case, both my mentees are from the same geographic region, namely South Asia. And so they can bounce off each other and help strengthen and build their networks as they combine their experience and their respective networks. So just to touch on a timeline to give you a feel for where we're at. 
So from around about November to January, the fellows first identify their regional mentors, although some of them will come knowing their regional mentor already. And then regional mentors yourselves will be invited, you receive your welcome packs coming into the program. Then around about now, we try to ensure that the triad meets, starting to develop that mentor, regional mentor and fellow relationship. And then round about now as well, we'll start talking about pilots, the request for application is released, the expression of interest come in and people start focusing in on what they're going to do when they go home. So this is just a little bit of a schematic of the timeline again, really trying to incorporate this idea of the theory of change. So first of all, the fellows arrive, they come and get settled in the new country and in the program, also thinking about issues that perhaps they haven't had the luxury to think about from the pressures of time in their everyday jobs, then start to understand the goals and vision of GBHI and their role in that, and how that aligns with their growing vision. They start to expand knowledge, identify opportunities, they begin to engage in the community, and all of these activities are largely supported by the GBHI mentor. But then gradually, gradually, they start looking outwards again. And that's when the role of the regional mentor becomes very important. And this is when starting to think about impact through populations, practice, perceptions, policy, publications, and also patient and public involvement, which is an essential aspect of the journey. So just coming down to the very specifics, which you'll hear about more in a moment, the role of the mentor, the regional mentor in helping develop and implement the pilot project. So the, the, every um, fellow will have the opportunity to apply for funding for their pilot project. And so they'll look to their regional mentor and their in-house mentor for expert advice on the project in terms of regional disciplinary contact, context, also to review the drafts of the pilot proposal and become a critical friend and help them develop it through multiple iterations and drafts. And through this time, there'll be several ment uh, mentorship and fellow and mentee meetings. We'll also request a statement of mentorship from the in-house as well as the regional mentor to indicate how they will support the fellow and their project and how this will align with the goals and visions of GBHI. And then finally, just to finish up with my last slide, Moving a little bit away from the fellows at this point, but thinking about yourselves, the regional mentors, many of you will already know each other, which is absolutely fantastic. But for those of you who don't know each other, we hope that there will be a growing regional mentor network so that that aspect of the GBHI family, so to speak, can continue to grow, interact. Because ultimately, the power of GBHI is in that growing network and the interactions between people. So we hope to see you in the future through engagement events at conference we may be attending. We've got ADI coming up, AIC is coming up. So there are various interactions and various opportunities in which we hope we'll have the, the chance to meet and build that um, those networks and those collaborations. And with that, I'm going to leave it and stop sharing and hand back to Owen. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Erisima. Um just to uh, give a, a bit more detail on the pilots, uh, I'm going to hand over to Aura now. Thank you, Owen. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Aura Damari, and I'm the staff lead for the Pilot Awards program. Fellows are now starting to hear from me regularly with um, resources for their pilot applications and reminders of important deadlines. And I look forward to working with them on their applications, as well as um, those who are funded will receive a fair amount of support from me going forward. So today I'm going to share a bit about the goals of the program and how pilots tie into the overall learning experience. You've heard a little bit about that already um, and mentorship for fellows. Um, I will also review the timeline and components of the request for applications and share some key highlights about the program thus far. So this program is made possible through a partnership with the Alzheimer's Association and Alzheimer's Society UK. Each award is up to 25,000 US dollars and the partnership provides sufficient funding for all fundable proposals. We have developed a robust and fair review process with representatives from each institution reviewing applications based on evaluation criteria outlined in the RFA. This is not a competition among fellows and creative applications are um, 
funded at the same rate as uh, non-traditional applications or traditional applications. Um, we work with our partners, which allows us um, to the fellows the opportunity to learn about the Alzheimer's Association um, grant process and grant portal and to gain visibility with these two grant making institutions. The overall goals of the program are to provide fellows with critical hands-on experience that complement the GBHI training and contribute to their career advancement, especially as they return to their home communities. Pilot findings also build an evidence base and are disseminated throughout the GBHI network. Uh, the program is a key component of the overall GBHI learning experience and provides an opportunity for fellows to develop valuable grant writing skills by putting together a grant proposal, including writing an abstract and building a budget. It's also a great opportunity to develop a working relationship with their mentors. So as you heard earlier, um, there's a strong emphasis on the mentorship component with the pilot application. Um, mentors provide support and guidance through the application phase, as well as during implementation if funded. A statement of mentorship is required from both the regional mentor and the GBHI mentor. Um, and this accounts for 20% of the overall score. It's important to show that the application is supported uh, and the regional mentors specifically provide key and local context and are best positioned to address any feasibility considerations. Uh, with respect to feasibility, um, there's a long list of questions to consider and keep in mind. Um, it's important to consider how the institution will support the fellow and manage the award. Is the institution appropriate for the work planned? Uh, will data collection leverage existing studies or will the fellow need to build a protocol, ethical application, recruitment plan, or database? If so, does the fellow have experience in this process and how long does it take to obtain ethical approvals? Is research or a project requiring ethic ethical approval beneficial to the fellow's career trajectory? If not, it would be best to propose a project that would not require ethical approval. How much time will the fellow realistically have upon returning to their home community? Will they have protected time? And in looking at the timeline, um, we're just now entering phase one. Um, and this is an important time for mentors to be giving a lot of advice and you wanna really build a strong foundation for the plan. Um, and you wanna start addressing any feasibility concerns very early on. Um, it's also good to note timing and planning for implementation if the pilot is funded. Um, so the request for applications, uh, which has been distributed, um, includes all relevant information and should be carefully read and referred to regularly throughout the process. Um, you'll note review criteria, allowable costs, and any limits. Um, and these should all be factored into the overall planning. So here we have um, several examples of funded pilots um, moving from clockwise from the upper left. We have a journalist from Brazil collecting stories on being cared for from around the world. A creative movement program in New York led by a teaching artist. An awareness and community building portal for people with Lewy body dementia and their families in Ireland. A music program for Latino older adults in Tucson a neurologist in India studying the role of social interaction and physical activity in brain health in frontotemporal dementia, another neurologist in Peru exploring cognitive health and functional abilities of illiterate older Peruvians, and an arts for brain health project in Nigeria. So here's a um, snapshot of where we are today. Um, as Victor mentioned, um, we've got 163 pilots in 45 countries, totaling $4.1 million in US, fund, uh, US dollars in funding. And every year we add more to this. And the impact from these pilots um, continues to um, grow and um, We've got so far 155 publications, 
dozens of presentations at 108 distinct conferences and coverage through various media outlets. Of note is the amount of leverage and additional funding secured by these awardees, as well as the invaluable partnerships, collaborations, and professional growth that can be harder to measure. Even after the pilot ends, we continue to support their work. Thank you. Thank you very much, Aura. Um, so we're just going to move to 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 a short section now where um, we'll hear from some past examples of regional mentorship. Now, we'll be joined by Aline and uh, Emmanuel, uh, a, a, a dancer and physical therapist and uh, a neurologist. We're hoping their regional mentors might be able to join. Uh, unfortunately, they seem to have been caught up so far, but Jen will facilitate the discussion with them. So, Hello. 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 I think that wasn't for us. <laughs> okay. So let's see. So what I'm going to do, we originally, we had paired questions for the the fellows and the, the regional mentors, but since both regional mentors are so um, also, you know, busy with their other occupations and we were, we'll focus on the fellow oriented questions first. Um, and then if the regional mentors show up, we'll, we'll certainly um, ask them some questions too. Um, but I, I was first gonna ask, I don't know if, do we wanna pin our two fellows, Aileen and Emmanuel? Or otherwise, their faces will probably pop up um, as they begin speaking. It should be pinned, Jen. Just let me know if you have a difficulty seeing them. Okay, I don't see them yet, but that's okay. Um, hey, hello, Jennifer. I'm I'm connected. Yes, there you I are. Can't my face. Yeah. Okay, no problem. So I was going to ask each of you how you um actually met your regional mentors, um since you know it was mentioned by Arisima that, you know, sometimes people know their mentors in advance and sometimes they, they meet them as part of the project. Hi, Jennifer. I don't know if I'm going to start or Emmanuel. Sure. Uh, you can go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi. Nice to meet you all. Nice to meet faces that I have been missing since I left Dublin last year. And thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, hi, Alejandro, my my mentor. Uh, and yeah, I met my regional mentor because we work in the same university. I work in Federal University in Brazil, and he also works in the same university. And because of my connections, uh, he's a neurologist and he's responsible for the Parkinson's area in the hospital. And because my project is with dance and Parkinson's disease, and then I decided to contact him. Uh, he knows other people that I know and this kind of things. I think it's very interesting, as you, as you mentioned here, like to connect with someone that maybe can help you in, in your place, of, in your work, or someone that knows someone that you know, or someone that can be connected with the community that you that you are interested in working. And, and this is, was the reason that, that we, I decided to to invited him to to be my regional mentor. Hi, Manuel. Yes, I can I can speak now. Yes. Yes, uh, I can say uh, for me it was a uh, very interesting to meet my mentor. I remember the first time. Uh, he, he came from United States. My mentor is uh, Professor Jean Ikanga, who is a neuropsychologist. And so he came in, in my country, in the Democratic Republic of Congo in 2017. And when he came, he, he has created some uh, uh, cognitive tests. He wanted to do uh, some validation uh, studies. So uh, we have done the validation study with him in my country. And from that year, uh, I started working uh, with him on different projects uh, on Alzheimer's disease, where we collected co cognitive data and also neuroimaging data on Alzheimer's disease. And uh, from 
there uh, I was still working with him and even when I I, I went to to GBHI in in San Francisco and I was always uh working with him and and to because with all the expertise he, he has it was very helpful for me uh to see how it will help me uh in my project and even for my pilot project I'm doing now uh about uh, the association of multidimensional poverty with cognitive function in Congolese other adults I work with him Thanks, Emmanuel. Actually, that would be a great segue into the next question. And maybe I'll ask you to continue speaking. If it, Would you be able to highlight maybe one or two very specific things that were the most helpful um, that your regional mentor was able to give guidance on when you were developing and then now implementing your pilot? Yes, uh, for me, I would say, uh, the important things uh, were to see how to to, to choose the correct uh, tests uh, that we can do uh, to collect data locally here. And uh, also uh, when I have some uh, uh, difficulty or some challenge uh, about uh, patient, and I would like to to see how to have some uh, exact, uh, accurate information about the uh, cognitive tests, I can uh, ask him and he will give me uh, an answer about it. Thanks. And the same question for you. Yeah, go ahead. Thanks. Yeah, OK. It's uh, just, just to say that I am from Brazil. I think someone mentioned this, but I am a dancer. And I, I am also work as an associate professor in the dance department. And, and when I decided to choose my mentor, uh, he is a medical doctor. And I think it's a good combination because I work in this area that is a trend, transdisciplinary area or uh, dance and health and dance for health and arts and health. And I think it was very good for me. And, and one of the things that I did, it was I contacted him in the beginning uh, I contacted him since the beginning, I think in November or something, I invited him to be my mentor. And he uh, collaborated with, with ever, like since the beginning of the project, I discussed with him uh, my ideas. And also Alejandro, it was an amazing uh, re, uh, mentor uh, in, 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 in Trinity. And, uh, but I think when, uh, during, the pro during the process, he helped, helped me with the expertise in Parkinson's disease. And, and we discussed a little bit about this. this. Uh, I other people helped me a lot. Not only my 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 regional mentor, Irasima helped me a lot to, to build my my pilot project. And my pilot project is about promoting Amazonian dances for people with Parkinson's disease. And and I think my mentor uh, helped me specifically in the area of Parkinson's disease. And and now uh, during the process, uh, because my project uh, was approved, and uh, I st I started the project now in March. And I received the money. Everything went well. Uh, and one of the things that he helped me, it was with the hospital mm -hmm. uh, committee ethics. And because he's part of the hospital, the committee ethics, it was really, really uh, fast. Um, oh, I arrived in Brazil last year and then everything was organized well, uh, considering the bureaucratic things, uh, because he is inside of the hospital. He's going to help me to... Uh, recruit people and also we uh, evaluate he'll say, he's going to be part of the project now and i know that you have a question about this maybe i am answer but he is he's working with me he's not here because he's a medical doctor probably he had an emergency in the hospital or something like this but he confirmed but probably have something happened but he's in contact with me he's a, a open person open mind and and i am very very happy with with uh, my pilot and happy to receive the money and happy that the pilot started uh, and i think soon i'm going to have some data to share with you that's awesome thank you so much and i i mean building off of that 
it's, I mean, it, it's very clear and thank you for giving really concrete examples of how your regional mentor helped you like really facilitate the implementation of your project, particularly navigating the regulatory challenges of doing a research project um, at an institution. And we have collaborators in Brazil, so I know that it can be a very lengthy process and I'm glad that you're up and running. Um, do you imagine that even when your pilot is finished, you will continue working with your mentor? I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. I think it's uh, it's someone that works in the same area, but in the perspective of medical medication. And but I think we can because before starting my my fellowship, I I had a small conversation with him because we work in the same university, and it's good to have this kind of collaborations. But I I hope to continue in working with him. I know that he submitted some funding, and he invited me to be part of this. And and Victor mentioned something that the 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 you know the fellows they they have the money in the Alzheimer's Association, but also they are continuing asking funding for other institutions. And 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 I hope to continue collaborating with him. And I think it's it's a good combination uh have have a neurologist in my project and and also have an artist inside of a of a, a health area <laughs> yeah i think it's it's a great example and especially across disciplines of this kind of it's um a dual like we we call it like a win win right you know it's like it's it's not this like hierarchical relationship it's very much you know and this is the triad that Irasima showed that everyone is learning from each other and therefore we can all benefit each other in different ways based on our different expertise. Um, and it sounds like Emmanuel, you have a similar, I mean, you've already been working with your mentor for a very long time. So I, it sounds like you will continue working together. Is that, is that fair to say? Uh Oh, did he fall off? I don't see him. Oh, sad. Okay, we will ask Hello. him when he comes back. Hello. Oh, hi. <laughs> Emmanuel, you were talking. I didn't. I didn't hear your question. Oh, sorry. Um, I embedded it. I was wondering if you will continue to work with your regional mentor as well after the end of your pilot project. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, I'm still working with him because uh, we are planning to see how we can uh, uh, do the same project in different areas of the country because uh, where we are doing the pilot projects is in the capital of DRC in Kinshasa. And so we are planning to see how we can do it also in different region. Uh, of the country. So we're still planning to work to, together and do do also some cold studies uh, with him. Great, and Emmanuel, I'll stay with you for our, our last discussion question, which is um, as alumni now, the, I mean, it sounds like potentially building out your project to other regions could be uh, a potential opportunity for a future Atlantic Fellows for Equity and Brain Health. Do you imagine yourself now filling the role of a regional mentor in the future? And if so, how? Uh, I think for me, uh, it will be an honor to help also other people uh, to see how I can help, help them with the skills I've learned from GBHI and my, my mentors not only my regional mentors, but also my uh, GBHI mentors, AWI. So uh, I'm very open to see how I can also give my inputs to other fellows that came after me. Thank you. And how about you, Eileen? <laughs> yes, yes, I, I, yes, I am. I am really, really, you know, happy to, to help future fellows and and I know it's not so much people that are doing this uh, I think some fellows are doing this connection between arts and health but I think we 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 have to be we should be 
uh, connected and because we are strong if you are connected and, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be part of this big family that is GBHI. Uh, I really feel myself supported and I think I am here to support all this, other, other people, you know, like I am an associate professor, I am inside of a university, I can have this experience in research and also in practical and community uh, community projects. And this is my thing, it's connected to the practical and the theoretical area. And I, I am really happy to, to continue working uh, with other fellows. And also I'm, I, I'm hope to continue working with GBHI and, and, and collaborating with GBHI and Atlantic fellows, yeah. And in Brazil, we have a very nice community. I, 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 am, I am like uh, seeing Fernando here. A uh, very good friend, and uh, we are doing a lot of things together here in Brazil. We we have WhatsApp group, WhatsApp groups, and also we try to keep the the senior fellows connected. And and we are always I I felt always I felt I felt also welcome for these previous fellows when I when I returned to Brazil. They put me in WhatsApp groups, and and we do some barbecues, and uh, yeah. And you will see me like this because it's really hot here in Porto Alegre. I know it's not in, in the north, but it's really, really hot in, in Brazil now. It's a hot wave. But yeah, we are happy to, to, I am happy, and I know that the other fellows from Brazil are happy to work with uh, the VHI fellows, yeah. Great, right. thank you so much. I mean, I think, <clears throat> You're, you've highlighted both two aspects, right? I think that we really um, are supported by our mentors and by the fellow fellows, right? It's both across disciplines and interests, but also regionally. And it, it allows this really nice mix, mix of, you know, this cross-disciplinary or transdisciplinary work, um, but also, or, and also, you know, kind of supporting each other, um, working towards common goals. Uh, we might have to mute Emmanuel. Sounds like he's saying hello to somebody. Um, but I want to thank both of you for taking the time to share your experiences. Um, please send our regards to each of your regional mentors. We know they're very busy and also the time is very different, I think, where both of you are. So we really appreciate it. Um, with that, I think I can hand it back over to Owen, um, who will direct us towards our next activity. Thanks. Thank you very much, Jennifer. And a huge thanks to Aline and Emmanuel. And as Jennifer said, please forward on our best wishes to your regional mentors. It was a pity they could not join us, but uh, it was great to have your perspectives. So we're moving on. Have, having sat and, and um, or stood and heard other people, uh, we're giving everyone a chance now to to do a little bit of networking for about 15 or 20 minutes in, in small breakout groups that we're going to send people in now. Uh, sorry, uh, my computer is misbehaving slightly. But basically, we'd like people to consider a few potential questions or discussion topics when they get into these breakout groups. So, you know, obviously introductions. Um, these groups will be um, you a mixture of fellows, mentors, and faculty, and um, you introduce in terms of your name, area of expertise, where you're working or, or, or coming from. Uh, an interesting topic is is people's past experience of mentoring or being mentored, and and the cultural differences or expectations around that, which which can often be very interesting. If there if you have any questions or or, or common kind of thoughts or concerns about um where uh, mentors play key roles around the pilot proposal process and key considerations for success in the pilot proposal process. But the main the main goal of this is just to give everyone an opportunity to, um, to do a little bit of networking and get to know one another a little bit. So I will stop talking and I believe Mary is primed to send everyone off into the groups very shortly. Yeah, all rooms have been open, so you should have a prompt. Um, if you don't, it's not a problem. I'll I'll rejoin you to a group.
Just checking in, is anyone having difficulty joining their group? I'm not joining. No, I know you're not, Mindy. I didn't put you in one, <laughs> so that's okay. Hi, Jabril. They're just coming back from breakouts. Welcome. How did your presentation go? Impressive. And I promoted GBHI to the people. I said, apply. <laughs> there was a guy, a psychiatrist from a Canadian university, and he said, I want to do a, any fellowship in dementia. I said, why not apply GBHI? <laughs> Great. Great. Jabril, we're going to give you a, a new job title, recruitment <laughs> selection. <laughs> Don't let me say Fred now. <laughs> and my regional mentor will join also uh, because he was chairing the session and he's jumping in. And I will ask him to introduce himself. Okay. Hey, Mindy. Hi, Brian. We're back into the big room again. Yeah, yeah. The main room, the main event. <laughs> That's right. I hope, I hope everyone had... Uh... Good conversations and ni a nice opportunity to meet with one another in in the break. <coughs> so we we might we might move um might move to ju just any if if anyone has any comments or questions about mentorship or the pilots or GBHI, please either put your hand up or um pop them in chat and myself and Aura will 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 facilitate. Now's the time if you have a question, because it's very likely that your question is something that is someone else's question as well. Um, I can't figure out how to put my hand up, but can I, this is Jim, can I speak for a moment? Sure, Jim. Um, <laughs> of course. Thanks. In in our group, we, uh, we uh, talked about uh, two things. One is um, what happens when you have a plethora of mentors is that potentially a problem and 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 i think the answer is it can be um if they're you know offering um different and and sometimes inconsistent views and so there's a need to think about which mentors can help with what and to bring them together when possible for you know, collective discussion so that's one issue and the other issue uh that was mentioned was um one of the uh, um, oh, important well, messages well, yeah. from mentors is um don't take what I say without evaluating it critically, you do your own thinking. Those are the two things I thought that were interesting in our discussion. Jim, uh, that, Jim that, came, that came up on our discussion too around, you know, mentors. And, and one of the things um, I shared with our group is that um, the way it, it's, it's, it really matters in how you write your grant. Um, if you write a grant with five mentors, you're almost certainly going to get a criticism that who's coordinating all this. It's too much voices. This is an early career person coming in and they may have uh, lack of coordination. And, and so that can be detrimental, although we also recognize how important it is to have many voices. And uh, sometimes it's necessary for the type of work you're doing. What I've done in the past on in my mentoring statement is I will uh, put myself out as the person who will coordinate mentoring and will list other mentors in my mentoring statement that these are important people that are engaged but that I'm taking the responsibility to coordinate the mentoring so that the fellow doesn't get um, uh, that that criticism uh, and we, we see this in NIH grants too with people writing developmental grant K it's a common criticism. You have too many mentors, too many voices. It's your too early career to be getting that. So we kind of mitigate it by trying to coordinate that through some kind of a mentoring, um, uh, how do you say, coordination, I guess, that, that there should be a primary person. 
Um, and then I guess you're right, uh, uh, Jim, as well, when you, <laughs> and sometimes it can be challenging when you write grants, if you have too many voices, it, you can get very confused, but it's, it has to be your voice ultimately. Uh, and so you'll have to make the final decisions on these things. So thank you uh, for the, for those thoughts and, and advice, Victor and Jim. Uh, I see, Laz, you've got your hand up. Right. Uh, thank you very much for all the information shared. Um, uh, I think we have a lot of information and sufficient one for that matter on the role of the mentor in supporting us to get the grant written and uh, for the pilot or perhaps we might need more information on the role of the regional mentor uh, during implementation. Um, is it entirely technical? Uh, would the regional mentor be involved in the management of the finances? And is the regional mentor have any role to play in reporting? Um, you know, post may, maybe the information might be more available uh, when for those who might get the grant, but I'm just uh, kind of wondering what that could be, if there are some additional information we need to know at this point. And if the regional mentor works in an institution and the institution is used to channel the funds for the grant, so what specific role is expected? Is it something that is optional? Is it something that is required? Thank you very much. I think there can be a lot of variability in, in how, how the, the degree to which a regional mentor might be involved in, in the administration of, of the grant. Uh, Laz, uh, uh, Victor or, or Brian or Jennifer or Irasima, do you have any thoughts or, or more detail on that or indeed Aura? I can, I can share what I shared with our group, which is that the way I perceive the regional mentor is uh, somebody who's... Uh, on the ground with you, ready to fight the fight with you, whatever that might be. Somebody who's your champion. So, uh, somebody who knows the context in which you're implementing the project and may have additional skills that you don't have, may have more experience on navigating when you hit a snag. Also championing and sponsoring you. So thinking about you and your life and your career uh, when I mentor somebody at UCSF, I take it on as part of my job to sponsor them, to make sure they're getting opportunities, to make sure that they're getting the right salary when they're being brought on, that they're advancing you know, well, that they're connecting as they need to within the community. These are things that we at GBHI cannot do because we're distant, right? And, and so it's really critical to have somebody with you on the ground fighting the fight um, to help you succeed in your career, not only your pilot. So if your pilot requires help, if it's difficult to navigate it through the hospital systems and you have somebody who can, boy, that would be kind of a perfect setting to help you be successful in your pilot. In contrast, if you're going through a group that you've worked with before, you've had the funding through them, you know how to do it. It doesn't seem like it's as much an important role uh, at that point, but perhaps there's something else that the mentor can provide like a connection politically or somehow amplifying or maybe even a radio station connection where you can advertise the stuff. But uh, these are things that help you to implement the project on the ground. And, and that's why we want somebody who's regional, uh, who's kind of helping to champion what you're trying to do in the place you're trying to do it. That, that would be my view of, 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 of it, Laz. I hope that's helpful. Um, I don't think it's prescriptive that they need to do this or that. I read a lot of progress reports and final reports, and often they don't mention anything about the mentor except there may be a signature at the end. So I don't think there's a requirement that you have any kind of reporting on that. Although they need to review your final report, for sure. I would just, just add to what Victor said. Is I, I think there should be early and intentional involvement of the regional mentor. Um, and I think, as, as Victor was saying, I mean, the role of the regional mentor can can vary, but, it, it, you know, I think you need to think about in an intentional way what that role is and how the regional mentor can best help. And that's, you, you develop that by early consultation and discussion uh, as you develop the uh, uh, the pilot. So I, I think we've, I think the, the touch points have been outlined already by, by Owen and by Aura. And I think, 
uh, meetings like this are useful in terms of making sure that uh, both both the fellow but also the regional mentor is aware of how they can contribute. But I, I do think early and intentional consultation and working together um, for common purposes is, is really the way to go. I see Claudia Sumoto here, and I think a good example of, uh, I think here for on, on behalf of Regina, and I know that Claudia is already thinking about how is Regina going to reconnect into the community? What is her position going to be? How are we going to run the the work that she's she's going to do when she returns? Um, these are people that are they're your champions. They're your sponsors. Uh, they want your success as much as we want your success. And and those are kind of kind of ideal situations that uh, sometimes are hard to come up with for everyone. But that, that's kind of an ideal, I would say. Thank you, uh, Brian and Victor. Does anyone else have any other questions or anything they'd like to kind of report back in on from the discussions on, on the breakout groups? Or Asim or any of the other faculty uh, might, or from Trinity or, or UCSF might like to say anything? Sure, Owen, I can jump in. I think um, a, just an observation from my group is that um, everyone was regionally linked and really you know, either met or knew each other already. And I think that was a, an early example of development of the regional network, even beyond their role as the mentees, uh, the mentors for the mentees. Um, so we see that as playing out already in this very small meeting. And that was nice to see. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah, our group had um, regional mentors who are really very experienced in mentoring in similar types of programs, although not this is their first time being a regional mentor for GBHI. And so not a lot of questions there, but I'll say I'm really excited to get to meet as a triad with my mentee uh, and his regional mentor to, to start to really um, support that pilot development. So um, it's great to be able to network today. Thanks, Kate. Anyone else? Roman has his hand up. Sorry, Roman. Yes, thank you all. Uh, great to see you. Um, I just really want to reflect from the point of view of the prospective oh, regional mentor. Yes. And you may think that this is all very formal and perhaps very involved, but actually uh, it's not. Uh, it's very facilitating. It's very organic. It's a pleasure to be involved with. Essentially, uh, your uh, mentor is going to, your, your mentee is going to be exerting that leadership and developing all the work and, and leading on the workflows. And you are going to be someone who can support that, but more organically and in a facilitating way. And and I think it can be a, a present and a big gift for you as well in terms of, you know, gaining access to this fantastic global network that we're all part of. So we have a gift, you know, uh, that we, we, we need to administer, you know, and, and we have a mission to fulfill. And it would be fantastic that you come on board to do so. Uh, so you're very welcome. And I hope that, you know, you enjoy the journey as much as I do. Thank you. Thank you, Roman. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to add or any questions or comments? Just building off of what Roman said, I mean, I think one of the themes that came up in our group, among many others, was the the ex exactly what Roman was alluding to, which was that the, the mentor relationship is as much a, a gain as a give. Um, that it, it really is something that we as mentors are able to um, benefit from. We learn from our mentees and we can um, also experience that, you know, where mentees become mentors and mentors become mentees. And, um, you know, the, the yin and yang of, um, I think Mubarak said, you know, described how mentorship relationships can really evolve over time um, and that that is such this lovely thing. Um, that, you know, it's a human relationship. And so it, it changes over time and it, it is something that will continue to give. Thanks, Jen. And I think um, one of the, th one of, you, you mentioned this in, in, in the earlier discussion, Jen, when you were speaking about um, 
asking the the Aline and Emmanuel, you know, about potentially becoming mentors or regional mentors themselves. It's very exciting. Every year we have a couple of alumni who become regional mentors for the first time, and it's it's kind of indicative of how our network is kind of cross-linking, but also how people's careers are advancing post-fellowship. And, you know, there's, you know, it, it's very exciting to, to see that development. So um, there's a comment from Barbara. Barbara, would you like to speak? No? Sure. I've had a little trouble getting myself on again. Yeah, I just, I mean, I've done, as I think about it, a, a fair amount of it with the students I've mentored, um, you know, through medical school, residents, fellows, each interaction is totally different. And the best thing is to find, help that person find what their strengths are and help them know how to use them. And then they reach and they grow. And it's just, it's amazing to watch. It is really, uh, truly a gift. Uh, to see this process. And it can't be, I don't think you can go into it with specific expectations. That mentee helps you know what's important to them and what they need to do and want to do. And you can reflect back and help them understand, you know, a bit more about what they can do. It, it's just, it's a wonderful process. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Um, anyone have anything they'd like to add or? Any any questions? Realize it's getting late in the day for for some people, depending on what part of the world you find yourself sitting. <laughs> uh. Well, one one thing, Owen, that I think the conversation is bringing to light for me is that the word mentoring is not universally used. So there may be people on this call who haven't really heard of this too much or had the concept. It's it's certainly something we know well in the US and probably in Europe, but, um, and part of why I'm using different words when I talk about it, I use the word champion, you know, the word sponsor, the word uh, mentor, the, the, it's really kind of a friend, somebody who's there in the ring with you fighting to move things forward, uh, supporting, providing guidance, trying to troubleshoot when things are not well. So um, I just wanted to mention that, that the term might seem foreign to some folks on this call, but the concept is not. I know everyone does this. Um, so please don't get too hung up on the term, but think about the, the support that you may be able to provide for an individual so they can succeed in what they're trying to achieve. Uh, Jibril uh, put it uh, very poetically, he is supporter, I would say, when navigating <laughs> through the tides. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a nice image. Yes. Um, yes, but also let's remember that you know there is a gain uh, for the mentor as well because uh, we can all agree on the fact that we uh, learn perhaps a little bit more than we teach through the journey with the fellows uh, because the diversity is so huge. Uh, you know, chances are you still do not know what's going on in the fellows country. Uh, and, you know, you have never reflected in that way. You've never really kind of uh, thought about that perspective. Every year I've been learning new things in this program, and this is what hooks me up to it. Um, so uh, a little bit of imposter syndrome also healthy uh, from the point of view of the mentors. I think really we don't have all the answers, but, you know, we get the joy in learning as well as giving. So um, I think, yeah, I would encourage you, you know, to be part of this because it's incredible what you can learn when you're meant, when you're mentoring uh, a GBHI fellow. Thank you, Roman. Yeah, so um, such wonderful uh, input from so many people. And I um, want to just thank everyone for their time. I think we can wrap up a few minutes early. Um, but want to um, just stress that we're here for um, support and answering questions along the way. Um, and thank you all for the, the work that you do. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Bye, nice to see you. Okay, bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. -bye.